What's up and welcome back to Cleats to Whistle podcast. I am Brad Valdez. And I am Kevin Watson. And we are here at Scott County and, and we have the head coach here. Very honored to have him on. And and you know what? I'm going to have coach say something about you. You know what I mean? This is what we try to do is, you know, coach, coach has a relationship with you and I want him to show some love to you. You know what I mean? Well, we, we you know, we coached against each other a couple years when I was at PRP and kind of, you know, not really friends, but kind of started talking a little bit online and and I've always admired his his I mean golly his career speaks for itself I mean you know great program great coach I mean just a great guy a lot of people he's I will tell you this he's misunderstood out in the state he's a great guy a lot of people see this rough exterior and he's a good guy now Friday nights he's he's don't talk to him because he's he's that dude but He's a great guy. I mean, it really is. And 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 I enjoyed coming down here and getting our butts kicked a couple of times by him at, <laughs> at, at old Georgetown College. I mean, uh, I was telling him the story when we came up. Y'all beat us like sixty-one to twenty something, and it was it was really kind of close. And y'all pulled away at the end, but you ran them after practice after the game. Yeah, you remember uh, that? I, well, you don't I, remember I, that? No, I've got a foggy man. We better not bring that kind of stuff back. Well, no, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> I think you do it every day, any, every game anyway, don't you? Yeah. Don't you well, run uh, across the field and back? Yeah, we might have done something. And, like you, that. and he, I was like, this was my coach McKee's a, a great coach. When I looked over there and I was like, they just beat us by 40, and he's running these dudes. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, whoa. And, and the, the and, mentality, man. I mean, it's the mentality. It yeah. is. And here's the thing. You can do that with these kids. You can't do that with the little kids. They'll quit on you. They do. I mean, it happens every time. Yeah. It's it's just a different – it's a lunch pail mentality. The kids take on his persona. And I'm I'm happy to be here with him. I mean, I want to hear what he's got to say because this dude, he's probably forgot more football than I'll ever know, to be honest with you. And and I really appreciate him having us come out. Yeah, and I, like I yeah. said, it's, it's an honor to have you on. Yeah. But you know what? Go ahead and, and can we just have you introduce yourself and, and then we'll start rolling. Oh, no, that's good. I, I really appreciate you all being here. I mean, I'm a football junkie. Uh, how long have you all been going now? Uh, I started this last season. And, and coach, I stepped in this year after I yeah, retired. I think I just saw it on Twitter. I wasn't following yeah. you all at that point yet, but it just popped up on my feed. And so I clicked on it, and I I, I think I've watched every one of them. Okay. Uh, that's good you know, or know. at least a, a portion of yeah. every one of them. Uh, you know, Mike Jackson and I coached together. He's still one of the best football coaches that I've ever coached with. He he's so intelligent. Uh, he's so detail oriented. He always wore a white t shirt and he used those uh, uh, lead pencils. You know those little push lead pencils. <laughs> and he would write with it, and I couldn't read it. And uh, but that we, was on purpose, probably. Yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> uh, but but we coached together, so you know I've watched what you all have done, and you know I, I appreciate it. The the guys at Big Things Kentucky, they've worked hard to promote football in our area, and then you know David Buchanan, Chuck Smith, they've got a a mm -hmm. podcast talk show type thing, and so honestly, I've I've listened to about all of them. I mean, I seldom turn my TV on other than maybe college football. So when I sit down at night, the day's over whether that's 8 o'clock or midnight or 2 a.m. or whatever, I always get on my phone and I like to look at Twitter and I like to watch stuff like this. So, you know, anytime you get an opportunity to talk about your program and most importantly your players and and your administrators and the people that set the vision for this district, uh, it's an honor. So I'm, I'm glad you guys are here. Uh, and you're coming back. Boyle County. We'll be here. I mean, you could have picked any game, but Boyle oh, County. Oh, no. We want to see, we want to see the best. <laughs> It, yeah. We want to see. We want to see what. And my, we did our pick show. I don't know if you watched it yet. I've watched some of it. Yes. And let's be honest, they're probably the best team in the state. Well, you know, it's. Uh, I thought last year when we went over there, and, and you know they they got a great combination. They have tradition. Mm. Coach Haddix and his staff are really good coaches. They, they've they've had good football teams there for 25 years. But, you know, they've got some of the – we talked about it earlier. They've got some of those X-Factor guys. You know, Quisenberry, yeah. listen, we could go around, sit around. It's what we do forever. And so, this is one's the best. And with this guy in 86 and this guy. But he's <laughs> – He's very he's comparable. in that Rondell yeah. Moore, Wondell Robinson type guy. That's and pretty high cotton that's right there. Pretty, that's, that's, 
Uh, That's good. So, so, you know, they've got the X factor to go along with everything else that you need. Yeah, Yeah, there you go. But but that's why you come here. I'm interrupting you, but that's that's why that's why these kids come to Scott County High School is to play in that kind of game. You know, when we went over there last year and played them, like I said, we got beat pretty soundly. But you know, we weren't going to play anybody else in the regular season that was that good. And, and you, you know, knew exactly where you stood after you left that game. You right. knew what you and needed you to work on for the rest say, of the way. You know what? We, we were behind Watson at left defensive end all preseason. We were behind him the first three games. We we believed in Watson. He's a great kid, but we got to make a change at left defensive end. And if you'd have played somebody that you would have rolled, you would know that. You That's never been known. fun here over the years. You know, we've played at Elder at the pit. Mm. We played there. We played, uh, you know, at Moeller. Football is such a funny – we beat Moeller in 2018 at Moeller. Now, I know X and, and Trinity have, have beaten a GCL team, and I know that Fort Thomas has beaten a GCL team. I, Mayo probably has, and I just don't know for sure. But, you know, there's, there's only one or two public schools that have ever beaten a GCL team. And we beat Moeller at Moeller 10-7. And it was just, it was rainy, and we could con- we controlled the ball on the ground. And, you know, I remember coming home and just, it was like, you know, they, they said, what will you miss? People ask me all the time, you already did. How much longer, Coach? You know, I, I, don't, I don't know. This season, I mean, there'll be parts of it I won't miss. But I remember telling uh, my oldest son, Clay, who's on our staff after we beat Franklin County in the opening game in just a great game two years ago, we're riding back on the bus. And that's what I'll miss. You know, that time with those kids yeah. when they are just – they've put the work in. But anyway, the, the moral of the story is we, we beat Moeller over 3-0. and oh. We lost the next three games. So, you know, football, uh, it, it can be humbling. <laughs> uh, the, the, the most important thing that I learned – you know, my hero is my dad. You know, I mean, I, I've got coaches that influence me. I, I, I'm good with that and guys that I talk to today, but – you know, I look up to my father the most, and he's who t- – you know, you got to answer the bell every day, good or bad. And and we just kept chopping wood, carrying water to steal all the old lingos, and we ended up in 2018. That's the last time we were in the finals. So we were 3-0, and 3-3, oh, and, and then 11-3, and three, and then Mayo beat us in the finals. So really glad you guys are here. Yeah. I, I will tell you one thing. You were 15-0 and 0 the year you beat us. We, we were 15-0 in 2013, yes. That was a great team. We had a, a lot of really positive pieces on that team. We lost in 12. It's funny how things work, and you remember this stuff because you were at PRP, but in 2012, Trinity beat St. X in the third round of the playoffs, but Quick got his ribs That's hurt. That's right. That's the year we went to state championship. Mm-hmm. Quick got his mm-hmm. ribs hurt. All right. Well, Quick was their – they're kind of, he was their motion guy. Mm-hmm. They had him in the slot. Yeah. They ran him on the jet. They mm-hmm. had him out wide. He returned to kickoffs. He mm-hmm. returns to punts. And then we get up to Trinity and we're in, in 2012 in the semis, and it's cold and it's windy and quicks out. And at one point in time, we led in a game 14 nothing, but we lost 21-14. You guys should have won that game. In a way. great game. Yeah. And, and I really still feel like – that, you know, as a coach, I cost us that game. We, I remember we picked our, – our defensive guys did such a good job. We picked a pass off, and we took it down the left sideline to go up 14 nothing. And when the kid caught it, I said in my mind, we just won a state championship. Oh, so you were totally overlooking us, right? I was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. But I just said – I just thought, we just won a state championship. Yeah. And I really think when I go back and I look at that game – you know, our play calls, you know, you're playing with house money. Yeah. We're at Trinity, we're up 14 nothing, and I was probably too conservative. We watched the film, and we were like, how did they lose this game? Oh, we were one in We eight. always had the – hey, listen, we always had the old thing. I always asked Coach Heiser, what would happen if we'd have played Scott County? And he'd be like, well, you know, I said, no, they would kill us. Yeah. They well, we killed. might not have. But I just – I know. No, it's it, – We were one in – we've – as a program, we – you know, and you, you know this because you lived it, but – you know, the, the Trinity, St. X, Mail, that threesome. We're one and eight against them in either the semifinals or finals. It's a mental thing. And, it and really is. And they're just, listen, and, and people think, man, they, they got, and first off, they do have really good players. They do. They and, do. But they've got great tradition, and, and their coaches are outstanding. 
Yeah. You know, Bob Beatty's a good high school oh. football coach. As there is. Kevin Wallace right yeah. now is an outstanding coach. Bart Brenner's a defensive coordinator. You know, Chris Wolf is, uh, you know, he's a good mm. friend of mine. We, I ran into him this year in St. Louis at a, at a Glazier clinic. And, uh, you know, that, they're, they're outstanding coaches. But, but that, that was a tough night that night. But I knew walking off that night with what we had back and when we got back started, I, I knew we'd have a great team in 13. Uh, I remember in our, our game that we wanted to get there, we were up pretty good, and the announcer was announcing the scores, and we are like, oh, man, Scott County, here we come. And then it went forever, and we didn't hear anything. We were like, uh-oh, yeah. something happened. And then they announced the final, and we were like, my, our kids were literally like, yeah, whoa, It was just Trinity, a breath of fresh really? air to play us. Really, Trinity? Played, yeah. Wow. It's a mental thing. It Coach, really I was going to I was going to ask you about some memories, but man, I just got some phenomenal he's, listen, phenomenal memories. He's been memories. coaching 33 years. He could sit here for 4 hours <laughs> and tell you the memories. And I guarantee it he can name you as quarterback on his first team, the center, what his name was. Jimmy Dan I mean, Myers and Cartwright. I mean, there you go. See? <laughs> I was at Oldham County in 95. There you and go. that was, it was a, you know, that that was like a jump start for us as as coaches and it, it's you know, a guy named John Regunis was our principal at Montgomery County and got our foot in the door, and then I was fortunate enough to get the job. And that's when Jefferson County – see, in 94, all Jefferson County Public Schools were still in 4A. That's right. So, Holy Cross, small class A. That's right. Uh, you know, Atherton. Yeah. Uh, whoever, you were 4A. If you're Jefferson County, you're 4A. Well, 95 was the first year that that wasn't the case. And what happened was we got in a district that was friendly. We got in a nine-team district that was very friendly for us. We had eight district games, and we were able to, to go through the season undefeated, and then we got beat in the playoffs. And that really jump-started, you know, what we were trying to do. And then Mike Jackson, who I was at Oldham one more year, and I came here, he took over. And, you know, it's funny how it goes up and down. I think yeah. we beat South, old Jamie Reed and those guys. I think we beat South like eight or nine years in a row. And I say we, I was gone, <laughs> but I would still check yeah. that South yeah. on yeah. And, and and then now South's got the upper hand. I'm not sure how many years in a row South's beaten OC, but it's several. <sighs> yeah, so that'll be a, yeah, a it's... good war this year. Well, I've I've, I've gotten way off on no 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 absolutely. no. I was no, actually I was going to ask you, did you prefer the four A class or or the six A? Yeah, uh, the only thing that that's not uh, it's not super friendly about our current setup is especially for stronger programs is it's so hard to get non-district games yeah. and you know what what you're doing is you know if you're out there you're in a four-team district you gotta find seven games and that gets really tough so yeah. um well, I, and it's like our situation in fairdale we had to travel because there was only all the five eight teams were in our district so we had to travel and like we didn't have the money to come to scott county mm -hmm. I mean, I think we – didn't we talk one time about we the did, COVID year? Just, it wasn't uh, it the COVID year? We yeah. couldn't get it together, but we were like <coughs> – That's the first time I ever yeah. talked to you because you had put something out on Twitter yeah. that said you all needed a game, and we just – you get – I don't want to say we desperate. Were desperate. We were desperate. I don't want to say <laughs> No, we're yeah, you can say it. You can say <laughs> it. You know, you just get to where you're like, man. And, and you know, you really don't want a 50 or 60 to nothing game either way, but you also – You got to get the work in. It's so th th that would be a little challenging with the yeah. six classes versus four. That would be, I think, the biggest challenge. I think it's watered down. And there we go. I think six is. And that, now we, we we talked to him about uh, being a coach, man. I hey, I love this first oh, yeah. ten it's, minutes. It's, I'm it's telling, we could literally man. stand here for four hours. Oh my goodness! But but you as a player, you you know what I mean? What was you know? Did you play college ball? Did you <laughs> did you you know? Yeah. Well, ironically, you know, my high school head coach Ray Graham is on our staff now. Uh, he's retired wow. from Harrison County, and he coaches our offensive guards and is, is doing a great job. So, yeah, I mean, I was a very, you know, frankly, I was a very average high school athlete. Uh, I love sports. I played all three sports in high school, I played basketball, played baseball, I played football at Harrison County. And, you know, I, 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 I could never contribute on the basketball team. I, I contribute I, – I used to laugh, like, in baseball – I. That I was a pitcher. They'd send me out, and I won't say the name of any schools, but they would send me out to pitch against a team that they knew we were going to beat because we were going to score 12 or 14 <laughs> runs. They're like, let McKee go eat up four or five innings today <laughs> so we can save Valdez and, and watch yeah. and save our good guy. But yeah. uh, So I grew up in Harrison County. I, I live there still today. I live 18 miles from here on our family farms. And 
uh, you know, and, and then I went on to Center College, and I played football for four years at Center College. And I was, again, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe by my junior year in college, I got to slightly above average. But I, I don't have any type of all-state accolades or major recruiting or anything like that. But I just love the game. And, you know, I love everything about the game. You know, like we've got the kids – our pictures are Friday morning. I love getting that new shirt. I love handing out the shirt sure, to the yeah, coaches. Yeah. They get them a new shirt. And then the kids are – the spirit packs are up in boxes. That's a – you know, you, and you it's go – like Christmas. Yeah. And then I equally – and I love that, you know, when it's hot right now and you're going out there and, and, and a kid's pushing through a, a, a two-a-day practice. But then I have the same love for, you know, when it's cold. And you got to practice when it's cold. You got to go out and play when it's cold. And and you know I, I don't love losing. I don't like losing at all. But I, I think everything in life you have to take as a challenge. And I, I love the challenge of how can we bounce back from a loss, and how can we you know. So I just love the game. Uh, let me see what time it is here. I'm good. Come my guys. I, I've got some guys coming. No, in we'll, at we'll, we'll cut it whenever you're yeah, ready. Yeah, we'll yeah, cut yeah, it. yeah. So uh, when when did you know you were a, a coach? Yes. Oh, in 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 uh, high school. Okay. Yeah, no doubt. In in high school, I just uh, I can remember going to the middle school games. Harris County Middle School. Bob Ruth was the coach, and I would go and I would stand on the sideline, and I thought I was coaching. And 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 here's the thing, you know, I'm so fortunate to be able to do what I'm passionate about. You know, I've watched all your all stuff. And, you, and one of these questions is, like, what are your hobbies? And, you know, I, I do do things besides coach football. You know, I love to mow on a zero turn. We have acre after acre to <laughs> mow. And, you know, I, I, I drive tractors. I feed cattle. I do those things. But I don't think I ever turn it off completely. And and that's because that's my passion. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm, right. I don't. I'm, there's zero chance our minister's going to see this. But I sit in church when we get the bulletin, and I'll catch myself getting the ink pen out, and I'll like scribble down a little bit. And think Absolutely. About next Wake year. up in the middle of the night, yeah, write think, a play down. Oh yeah. You know, well, Watson, you think Watson could play left guard next year? I gotta I gotta get with Watson next. And year. Watson's only a seventh grader, by the way, and he's, you know, he's and so all, that, yeah. No, you know, that, that, it, that's, and I've been lucky. That's what it's all I, I want to keep doing it. I really don't want to retire, but I also don't want to stay too long. And, and you know, I don't want to I – w- I want the program to be successful. Yeah. And if I yeah. see or feel at any – it's a little different world. And Coach can tell you right mm-hmm. now out there, it's a, you know, it's a little bit different world in terms of marketing, um, uh, let's see, parental involvement, um, you know, transferring, th- things of that nature. It's a little bit different. So I've got to make sure that we keep our program right on the cutting edge of that stuff. You know, five mm-hmm. years ago, I don't know if you've seen, uh, I retweeted it, y'all see it tonight, but, like, we released a video today, like a preseason no. hype video. I mean, it's good. Yeah. And my son, he, he took care of it all. But I know you need those kind of things. That's now. what it's about. Hey, five he said, years ago, give me an action shot. Give me yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's like, give me an action shot right here. And so, I, like, yeah, so I want to keep doing it as long as I feel like I can give the kids the very best opportunity to be successful as their coach. And when I, when I sense that that's not the case, then that's when, when I'll step away. Yeah. And the, the number you wore, did that have a meaning? Not really. No, I wore nine. I'll tell you a funny story. I wore nine in high school, uh, and I hung it on a – locker over at Franklin County and it wasn't, and I came back after the game and it was gone. Somebody had swiped it. I don't know from who. Locker room probably got left in the locker room. I was heartbroken. You know, I had a girlfriend. I had the oh. number nine necklace. You know, I came out my I think we'd won the game, but my necklace That's was awesome. gone. I wore 62 That's in great. college. Uh, my uncle also wore 62, but you know, and, and that's that's different. It, even in 20 years from where you went and you know, I didn't think a lot about issuing jerseys 20 years ago. I do now because that, that kind of thing, like kids, you know, probably when you grew oh, up, man. you're like, hey, what number did you get? Uh, 48. Good. Make 48. Make it the best 48 yeah, ever. Now yeah. it's like, hey, my brother had 52. I got to have, you know, so it, all those And you things, get kids that if they don't get this number, they're going to pound. And they, oh, I'm going somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. They promised me number six. Yeah. That's, that, that's, that's crazy. A little bit. It is crazy. That's crazy. But that's the way it is. 
Um, so let, let, let's let's dive into this year. Just I mean, I know we're cutting it. Cold. Yeah, yeah, let's well, dive I, into I this did, year. I didn't know I should have planned for more time. No, that's no you're great. fine. You're that's fine. Great. Let's dive into this year. Your yeah. expectations. Yeah. Your what are you what are you feeling about this? Be, before group? you say that, before you say that, I I was just blown away by these young men. I'm sorry. Oh, I got, I got to say this. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we've been around us. We've been around the state basically. Yeah. Uh, with this podcast, but these guys that were so even keel, so calm, the, the, the demeanor. But you can see that they got that little grit in them. They got that grittiness, yeah. man. I, I I told them I we went on like a five minute spiel about, it. Yeah. <laughs> but I was like I love the energy that these guys are giving. Uh, the first one, the the uh, the linebacker. Uh, yeah, no, the 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 left guard. The left Christian guard, yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. Rodriguez. Kid. Rodriguez, yeah. He said left guard. I was like, no, it, because it threw me back to when you know I was in high school. This is what our guard looked like. You know what I mean? That's why it threw me off because yeah, I'm so he's used not to six six three eighty. He's he's an athlete. Yeah, I've been here. Guard. I've been yeah. here for yeah. you know what I mean. I've been here yeah. for 10, 10, 12 years, and the, yeah. the our guards that we you know were six two two fifty. Right. You know what I mean? So it was totally different. But I just want to say the, the young the young men that we had we talked to, phenomenal young men, and like I said, it was just. And it's and I feel like because the, they're getting it from this guy. I I, I don't know, man. I just what feel, I tell you on the way down here. Not just you know. I mean, I, I don't. Uh, and I understand I'm the head coach, but you know, it, it's not they're getting it from this guy. They're getting it from us. And you know that you know Monty McIntyre is our defense coordinator. He played here in the '80s. He's he's been our defense coordinator for 20 plus. He's been on our staff. For or this is my 28th year here, so for 27 of the 28, so probably like 12 to 15 as the coordinator. And we've got five former head coaches on our staff. You know, and Mike Boland, who was at East Jessman 19 years, is, is here with us now. Ray Graham, who was at Harrison County, is here with us now. Scott Willard, who is also our baseball coach, was a head coach at Webster County. He's here with us now. Um, Neil wow. Furnish, who was the head coach at Harrison County, is is with us here now. Uh, he runs our ninth grade defense, and I, I'm forgetting somebody. But you know, we the, our other coaches, Aaron Hall, my oldest son Clay. You know, it means a lot. I mean, you all saw when you drove up here, and and I like to tweet that. You know, and and guys, I'm not talking about anybody else because my focus has to be on us. Um, yes, absolutely. But here, football matters. Yes. Football matters yeah. right here at this school, in this community, yeah. to these kids. Like all four of those kids yeah. that you talk to, you know, I've, I've been here so long that, you know, probably nine out of ten kids on the team, I know their parents or I've coached their brother or I coached their dad. But there's some kind of pre-existing relationship. And, like, all of those kids, like their parents, it's important to those kids' parents that they're good football players. Now, it's more important that they're good yeah. people and good students and all that, but – Football matters, and you can see from these facilities. And I, I don't know if we can work this out, but it would be great if you all could come back in the winter when it's completely Oh, done. We'll, we'll be here. And, you know, th this facility, yeah. you know, selfishly is second to none. You know, we, we're going to put a kitchen in, which we don't have yet. We're going to finish the film room. We've got work to do in the weight room. But you can just see – how awesome it is, and it makes you feel good about coming to work every well, day. Well, this is a yeah. proud tradition, and, and and I will tell you one thing. I don't know if you still do it or not, but 12, 13, when we came down here, halftime, they had the little leaguers out there yeah, now playing we'll, games yes. on the field during halftime. Guess what offense they were running? <laughs> His offense. I mean, probably I mean, wing T. <laughs> absolutely. But that's that's the tradition. That's the being proud to be a part of something. They come out of the womb and they're playing for Scott County. There you go. They're going to play for this guy at Scott County. They're going to run the wing tee. I his son, I, like I said, his son came out of the womb with a football in his hand, knew the wing tee like the back of his mind. When he played no, quarterback, I did. that that is true. Like when I, he come, when he played quarterback, I, I would pretty much bet you you're. Were you were you calling the offense at that time? Yeah. You didn't really have to do a whole lot when your son was here because he knew it like the back of his hand. Oh yeah. He that's, likes to throw then. He still likes to but throw But that's now. not an <laughs> that's not an anomaly with these Scott County kids. These Scott County kids bleed Cardinal. And we're red. you know we're really blessed. Like at the quarterback yeah. position, you know Bill Cronin, who was a longtime coach at Georgetown College, two of his sons were our quarterbacks, and then one of our assistant coaches, uh, Josh Davis. His dad, Mike Davis, he was our quarterback for three years. And two of my sons were our quarterbacks. So, you know, a lot of times our quarterbacks have come from a long line of Scott County football tradition. And 
it, it, this kid we have this year has a great arm. He's a four-year starter. He's going to be a collegiate quarterback. But he'll still take as much pride in where his left hand goes running trap as he does throwing a spiral out on a pass play. Love it. Five minutes or, or I'm whenever. Good. I just, yeah, I, I just got some guys I'm going to tell you right now, the first game in here is you won't – It'll be standing room only. Okay, there we go. And then talk about just the expectations uh, yeah, of, of, talk your, about of your team. Season. Yeah, talk uh, about uh, it. Of this year. What, what do you Well, want? you know, I think that, uh, and, you know, I kind of adopted this persona. You know, you're so foolish when you're young. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and probably with your all's podcast. Like, you had these preconceived notions when it got started, and you got in, you're like um, two months into it, you're like, yeah, Why that ain't happening. But you know, I can remember yeah. talking to one of our coaches. We we had, we had only been here a couple of years, and, and you're thinking, I said, "Well, you know, if, if we stay and work for, you know, for ten more years here and do this, just I said, you, you think we can, win, you think we can win a few state championships?" And he thought, "Yeah, well, I bet we can win two or three. Well, it was so hard to win the four or six A, and we haven't won the five A since we've been in. It's hard to win one period. Uh, you know, that's why the four Thomas Highlands is a bull county. He's a Mayfields mm-hmm. that have won 10, 12, 15, 20. Yes. That, but it's so hard. But I can just remember finally coming to the realization that there are some games, and I've listened to you talk about playing Owensboro, and, and you can correct me if you disagree. But, you know, when you go to – you took your team to Owensboro, okay, and I know Coach Dover. He's, he's my friend. He's a good coach. He's a good person. He loves kids. He works hard for them. But you, you take them down there, you probably can't beat them. No. I, mean, I don't mean that negative. No, you had I'm no chance. I'm just saying that, you know, yeah. you're on the road, you're three hours away. That's and right. frankly, their players as a whole, and that doesn't mean that you were knocking a single kid that played for Fairdale. That's right. Like we were in with Douglas in 21, 22, 23. We, we probably were not going to beat them. I mean, they had five or six power five guys on their team, and I I would laugh and say, we got a couple of guys going second shift Toyota. <laughs> uh, but, you yeah. know, so I, what my focus became as a coach and a leader of the program is, you know, how can we make this team the best it can be when we get to the playoffs? How can we be healthy? How can we be hungry? Yeah. And then how can we play our best football? That I wasn't upset we lost to Cooper last year. Did you all see Cooper in the finals? They got some dogs. Mm-hmm. I mean, that Alexander, he could play on Sundays. The quarterback's tremendous, have really good running back, got another receiver. But I wasn't very happy with how we played. We didn't play like ourselves. So, really, just our goal is can we get to November healthy, humble, and hungry and put our best foot forward in the playoffs? That's that's what our goal is. And take you know, it one week at a time. And take it, yeah. And you yeah. know, we probably hit less in practice than a, a couple of the guys that have been former head coaches that have come here have have commented on that. You know, we don't do a lot of hitting in practice, but we'll hit you on Friday night. That's right. We you only know, had full gear one day a week. Yeah, I mean, we just don't. You know, because that I think that changed. And and I don't know what your all's family situation or if you all have children, but you probably do. And all of a sudden, I, I got to thinking when my kids were coming through, I'm like, well, wait a minute. Well, I wouldn't want my son to get hurt on Tuesday of his ju- miss his whole junior year because he's repetitively tackling to the ground on a Tuesday. And so that changed a little bit with, in my mindset. And that's what I, – I don't have a, a tremendous amount, or we don't. I don't, shouldn't say I, we is a st- tremendous amount of parental issues because, for the most part, I think the parents trust us. You know, I just tell them, hey, look, I'm going to treat them the way I would treat my son. If, if, if I would get on Clay about it, I'm going to get on Valdez about it. I had a center named Valdez once. He was a hell of a center, too. Uh, he wasn't this guy. I can tell you. <laughs> no, he was bigger than this. <laughs> but but so you know our extra. Yeah. But, but we got a shot, you know. I and mean, we got some. You know, you guys talked to those four guys. We got some other guys. Our quarterbacks are four year starter. We got a kid yeah. named Timmy and Mongo, that'll be a sophomore that Kentucky and U of L have, have already offered. We got a kid named Buddy Collins that's committed to Navy right now. So you know we we typically have got a couple of those kind of dudes, one or two of them, and then the rest of us are you know lunch pail type guys. Yeah, you pails. guys can compete this year. Yeah, we think so. Yeah. Uh, you know, and we got a great – we, we open up with Franklin County, who's been to the semis four years in a row. They're 13-1 and one last year. Yeah. Then we play our county rival. Then two weeks later, we play Boyle. Uh, Woodford's in our district. They're very good. And then we got to either play probably Fort Thomas or Cooper in the second round. But we feel like we're in the mix. 
All right. Well, thank you very much for having us out, yeah, Coach. Yeah. Uh, like I said, we'll make it more more uh, coach-friendly when we come back out next time, and, and we'll just sit down and, and, and maybe just chat it up and uh, about the you know a season preview or, or review with you when we come well, back. We won't, we won't get anywhere near this dude, Boyle County Week. I guarantee No, no, no. I'm yeah. talking about after season. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We'll come no, back absolutely. and talk we'll, about – We want to come down when it's done yeah. and, and check this out. This and is, we can just sit down and talk. I mean, and it's, just, what, 10% done, and it's unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> unbelievable. Like I said, yeah. I, I appreciate you for having and us. I, and I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm the one who won't end it. I keep talking. But, you know, I've already had a chance to, you know, bring some family members in here, my own family, some people in town, and they're just like, yeah. oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Phenomenal. And that's kind of, you know, if you'd have told me, and, and I don't know what you think, because you've been coaching a long time too. Uh, you know, is football better now than it was 20 or 30 years ago? I'm not sure it is, but I'll tell you what's totally different. Facilities. Facilities. Oh, absolutely. Facilities of what's absolutely. changed. You know, we, we won't play a game on grass. We won't play a game on grass. Not one. You know, I mean, we've got four sets of uniforms. Uh, you know, we got – all, that's what's changed. Is the quality of the game better? You know, I don't know. I Actually, sometimes I kind of worry about the game a little bit. Not worry, and it's not – nobody cares what I think if I worry or not. But what I see and what would concerns me a little bit is the gap between the haves and the have-nots mm -hmm. continuing to maybe get a little mm -hmm. bit wider. You know, you can go right now, and I listen to you guys talk, uh, and I didn't listen to all of it. Like I said, I live way out in the country. I don't have very good service. But – you all went A, double A, triple A. You can almost right now take take three to four teams in every class that your 95% chance is going to win it. You know, so it's great to see, like, what Hart County has done in the last two years in 3A. Yeah. Unbelievable. You know, come coming from, from nowhere. Literally. Yeah. Never had won a playoff. We, had talk, we talked about that. He's never like, I've never heard of Hart County. County. Yeah. Other than driving through. Mumfordville. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. never had won. So, you know, the, the gap between the haves and the have-nots uh, you know, is, is you know, maybe well. Listen, we could have a whole show just me and you talking about splitting the counties and adding teams, and that's a whole different ball game. But you know, like Thomas Nelson and Nelson right. County. I mean, that's and right. I'm not going to get into the dynamics of that. Yeah. I mean, Nelson County had some tremendous football oh, teams back and in just the 80s. For reason, now Nelson County's been okay lately, but Thomas Nelson. You know, so I, yeah, yeah, we could. Well, guys, I appreciate it. I'm going to get in here and we're going yeah, to thank you. Thank you very much, Coach. Enjoyed like every like we always say, everyone has a story. We're here for them to tell the it. Cleats to Whistle podcast. Oh, yeah. Guys, I'm